lit up. The man burst. The man suddenly burst out into a lumpy mess of radioactive bumps, but the light got so bright that it melted the planet into nothing. All that was left was space. M10 started making logical notation of what happened, of what had happened. Sonya said, gosh, Newton, did you see that? Newton got up out of his throne and said, well, you don't see that every day. Then Shirley said, Newton, the Romulans are at it again. I know. And it seems like history is repeating itself with that man's description of the of the attack. Only the, only the computer was different. Sonya asked, Newton, do you think we can take them? Oh, heck yeah. I almost made the Romulans... almost made the Romulans... The Romulan race extinct last time. These are probably refugees, refugees who are trying to conquer the Federation planets so they can rule. Newton said as he walked up to the conference room, known, as, known in the past as the torture chamber. Two hours passed and Newton and some of his crew were sitting around a table. Newton said, my crew, we're up against the Romulans. I don't know what they are trying to prove by attacking some outposts, because now they are one of the weakest barbarians in the cosmos. Not only that, but there are only about 200 Romulans left in the whole universe since they tried to kill me a couple of years ago, when the meeting place was went crazy. And now the Romulans only have three spaceships left floating around in space. They're the ones who attacked the outposts. M10 said that each of the three ships that were attacking the outposts contained 50 men. That means if we had Mutania destroy those ships, there would only be 50 Romulans left for the survival of their race. And survival of their race. And I think that we should destroy their ships and have the 50 Romulans start from there. This will teach their offspring that war never did anything for them. They will probably become one of the nicest group of people to come around after we get done with them. It's this or else we will or else they'll start Galactic War 9 like I started the others. There's also one more thing. They have an energy plasma that can destroy plants with ease. They were good, and now they are excellent, except they won't be any match for the weapons of Mutania. Now, who proposes to stop them by the raise of hands? Newton and the rest of his crew raised, their, raised his hands, but surely, like last time, didn't know if she wanted to or not. Newton raised it for her. Newton then shouted, Sonya, your weapons officer, Shirley, your sensors officer, Obakoba, your shields officer, and the rest of you, you're anything you want to be. And now that we're organized, let's get them. But Newton and his crew were interrupted by Mr. Ngata, who said, I'm afraid you will all have to sit around. M10 is going to fight your battles for you, and destroy the three and last ships for you. Suddenly, Mutania picked up speed and went out to get them. And on one of the Romulan ships, the Centurion said, Commander, there's a strange ship approaching us at warp 8. Ship? You say ship? What can a ship do to a great Romulan ship like this? It said the Commander as he sat down on the bench with pride. It's Newton's ship Mutania. Mutania, evasive action, quickly. But right as the Romulan commander finished his speech, Mutania flew right at it and fired five photon torpedoes right into its side. Praetor was the was the command was what the commander yelled out as the first torpedo hit the flagship. The rest totally vaporized the ship into nothing. Newton and his crew ran into the bridge and said, What happened? M Tim explained, A Romulan ship got on my sensors, so I destroyed it. Newton shouted to Mr Negato, your so-called wonderful computer just destroyed a Romulan ship without t us telling it to. 
it could have been a good ship. Then you would have. Yeah. Then you would be charged with murder. Charged with <laughs> Mr. Nagato said, it was just a Brahmin ship. I think that M10 was. I think M10 um, knew what it was doing. It would never do that again without our orders. Suddenly, Mutania put on speed again and headed at another Romulan ship. It was the second to the last one. Sonya shouted to Newton. Newton, my sensors, my stations aren't responding to M10, and we can't slow it down. It's like the ship was running itself without any disturbances. Try anything, then. Newton shouted, but nothing worked. It was just M10 and only M10. And on the second Romulan ship, Commander, I hate to say this, but Newton's ship is approaching us at warp 10. Oh no, shouted the Commander. Saw the lights on the flag, the Romulan flagship lit up, and the controls on the walls exploded as the ship burst into fire, a fiery ball of debris from the weapons of Mutania. Another one shouted Newton angrily and frightened. Frightenly. Mr. Nagato said, M10 just doesn't understand. It's like a child with a, with a toy. You don't kill a child just because it hurts something, do you? I wouldn't think of hurting it, but I'm going to pull it, the thing's plug, said Newton, as he walked to the engine room where the heart of the computer was. Newton got his fist ready to punch a hole in the computer's side, but the computer knocked him back with such a jolt of electricity that it could have shattered a normal man into a million into millions of pieces. Sonia said, Newton, I don't think M10 wants to be played with, and in other words, not turned off. Yeah. You mean this thing can't be turned off. It looks that way, said Obakaba. And on the last Romulan ship, Commander, the ship that, that's just, that ship that's destroyed our other ships is starting to approach us, shouted the centurion with fear. The commander ordered, put on cloaking device quickly. When the cloaking device was activated, they became, they became invisible. Hmm, said M10, the ship is gone. It must have turned invisible. Well, according to Newton's ship's log, all the Romulan ships he destroyed always had a cloaking device, and they could always become invisible. But not one has fooled him yet, and not one will fool me, so I will play their little game for a, little, for a while and get them in the end. Some of the ship went into a comet's tail. The very same comet's tale that the other Romulan ship went in, went into over thirty years ago. And Newton got it by firing blindly. The computer said, Aha, the ship has gone into a comet's tail. A eh? Oh, the ship's gone into a comet's tail, eh? And I guess I lost them. But wait, according to my memory banks, this is the comet that orbits here every 30 years, and this is the same comet that Newton talked about in his ship's log. Well, in his ship's log. Aha, uh -huh, the ship has gone into the zone. Well, calculating to my superior genius, when, the in when an invisible object passes through a cloudy comet's tail, it leaves a visible trail. I must congratulate myself. Thank you, M10. 
I will swing around and get them red-handed. And in the engine room, two men were vaporized into nothing. When they tried to unplug M10 by a, uh, by a kryptonite ray beam, and Newton knew now that M10 was indestructible. M10 was in total control of Mutania now. Newton, I'm scared, said Shirley. Newton said, I hate to say this, but it looks like M like Mutania is lost. Meanwhile, in the Romulan ship, Commander, we lost them, shouted the Centurion proud shouted the Centurion proudly. Glorious. Now we can leave to our ne neutral zone and raise our Praetor's pride, said the commander. Commander, shouted another centurion. What is it now? asked the annoyed commander. The ship is still following us. And it's gasped the Newton. The commander faint, almost fainted and gasped. Newton, evasive action, quickly. The ship quickly, the, sh the ship shook violently as it changed course. The, Romulan, the Romulans had to hang on to something to keep from falling down. And on Mutania, Mutania was traveling through the comet's tail. And M10 was watching the viewing screen. The viewing screen was white from the particles in the comet. Mutania passed right through it into space. M10 said with a confused mechanical voice, Nothing. They must have guessed my move. I'll make Mutania fire, fire five photon torpedoes like, like Newton did last time. Mutania started firing five photons. The Roman ship shook and shook. How, Commander? How? I thought we fooled them. I thought so, too. Well, if that doesn't stop them, then activate the cloaking device again. And the flagship became invisible. Meanwhile, back on Mutania, Newton and the... Newton and the rest of his crew were trying to think of a way to deactivate the M10 computer. Mr. Nagato, the maker of the M of M the M10, said, "I've got it. Please tell me, us," asked Newton. "If we beam over to the Romulan ship, M10 will quit firing." "Are you sure?" asked Sonia. "I'm sure. I'm sure. We'll dress up like Romulans, beam aboard their ship, and they won't notice us." Newton broke in with, never mind that, let's do it. Ten minutes later, oh wait, I just meant, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, we'll dress up like Romans, beam over on the ship, and, and quit firing. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. We'll dress up like Romans, beam aboard the ship, and we'll and they won't notice us. Then we'll hold their commander hostage and call off the attack. To M10. And M10 will quit attacking us because he knows what I look like and who I am. Sonia said, You referred to M10 as he. M10 as he. Houston broke in with, Never mind that. Let's do it. Ten minutes later, Mr. Nigato out. Oh, Ten minutes later, and Newton and Mr. Nagato, Obakopa, and the rest of Newton's crew, men, which were four, beamed aboard the Romulan ship. Obakopa looked at Newton's pointed ears and smiled, saying, You look you look like the devil himself. Himself. Newton looked at Obakoba and said, Oba, I don't uh, know about you, but you but I hope the Romulans don't get curious about your black skin. You're probably the first black Romulan with white pointed ears. Suddenly a Romulan crewman walked down the hall, saluted, and then walked down the hall. But after seeing Obakoba's black skin with white pointed ears, he shouted, Hold it right there. What's going on here? Newton said, I guess you're wondering about my friend here. Ahem. Uh, here, uh. I guess you're wondering why my friend here has dark skin. That can be explained. Ahem. You see, it was like this. Albacoba broke in saying, Probably that unfortunate accident I had as a kid. Yes, you see, my friend here is a mutant. When he was a kid, the kids on the block were mean to him, and one day they stuffed his head into a nuclear reactor. But fortunately, they're... 
there was a Romulan Catholic priest nearby and got him out of it. That's the stupidest story I've ever heard. You and the mutant are going to see the commander. But right as the crewman got done speaking, Mutania fired blindly, causing a cave-in on the hallway, killing the Romulan and one of Newton's crewmen. And one of Newton's men. Newton and his crew ran to the bridge and pointed their phasers at the commander and his centurions, also at the praetor. Hold it right there, Newton shouted to the Romulans. Suddenly, Mutania fired again, causing debris to fall on Newton and the crew on the, and on the Romulans like falling sand. The commander said, Newton, why do you... Why did you beam over here? So my ship's computer will quit firing on you. And that way, we can disconnect it and take you prisoner. Mr. Nagato shouted, You won't do such thing. You won't... Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Nagato shouted, You won't do such thing. You won't do such thing. You won't do such thing. He shouted it the same sentence over and over again. Obakoba had to settle him down. The commander said, Since you have captured me, I have but one last duty to perform. The commander walked over to the control panel and was just about to pull the destruct cord when Sully Newton zapped him with his phaser, knocking him out. Newton sat down on the bench and stuck the commander's thumb in his mouth. Then Newton said to the people on the, on the ship, This is Newton. I am now your commander. You will take orders from me. And after that, he called M10, the computer, and told it what he had done. And also told it to quit firing on them. But M10 didn't quit, even when Mr. Nagato told it who he was. M10 even wouldn't beam them aboard Mutania. And Sonya and Shirley couldn't do a thing. The computer threatened them that if they did, it would kill them with supersonic sound. Ah, uh, Mr. Nagato, quit firing. But Mutania fired blindly again, and the Roman ship was hit again. Newton got a scared look on his face and realized that he was going to be executed by his own ship. Newton shouted, Put on cloaking device, the Roman ship, the Roman centurion said. It's already on. They were hit again. How, Newton, how, shouted the centurion. Even, not with, with our, even when our cloaking device is on, your stupid ship still fires. Newton turned around frightly and slowly said as he put his head on the wall, As a sorcerer, this M10 computer, it reads the thoughts of my... But before Newton could finish, Mutania fired again, causing the Romney ship to shake and bang Newton's head on the wall almost knocking off Newton's phony pointed ears. And Mutania fired again, making the lights aboard dim out and on, causing, phony, uh, causing sand to fall out on their heads. That was actually debris. How, Newton, how? Your ship keeps firing and getting us, even when our cloaking device is on. Why won't you let us fire? Newton stood up off the bench and said, It is time. Divert all power into energy plasma. Abakoba said, You're not going to destroy your ship, are you? No, I just hope that it will shake Mutania up enough to make M10 blow a fuse. And back on Mutania, M10 kept, kept firing, causing the unconscious Romulan commander to fall off the floor and take his thumb out of his mouth. Suddenly the Romulan ship became visible to came vi became visible in the screen so it could fire. But Mutania fired first, causing Newton and the Romulan and his Romulan crew to roll up against the wall and then on the other. Sand fell from the ceiling again and chunks of debris Oh, with chunks of debris. Newton ran through a threshold and a cement block came crashing down on him. But the Praetor and one of Newton's crew pushed him out from under it and got crushed instead to show their loyalty, loyalty even though they hated Newton. Newton shouted, Fire energy plasma. And one big yellow energy plasma shot out 
of the Romulan ship and chased Mutania away until it lost its energy and shook me and just shook Mutania a little bit. After seeing how lousy the energy plasmas of the Romulans, uh, um, ener how lousy the energy plasmas were of the Romulans, M10 shot back to get to new. Yesy. All right. Okay. I went the gill energy plasma shot out of the Roman ship and chased Mutania away until it lost its energy and just just shook Mutania a little bit. After seeing how lousy the energy plasmas were the Romulans, M10 shot back to get Newton again. Fire again, Newton shouted, and another energy plasma shot out of Mutania. M10 wasn't expecting another one, and when it hit Mutania, And when it hit Mutania with its shields down, the ship shook violently, throwing Sonya and Shirley here and there, and causing Newton's almighty stone worshipping bird to crumble to the floor. It pained Newton to have done it, but to have done that, but it was a matter of life and death. Mutania's power went dead for a while. But Sonya and Shirley couldn't unplug M10's plug because they were unconscious. Newton shouted, Glorious, glorious, we have avenged my mutant's pride. Now we can kill that computer M10. But M10 came on again, and Mutania fired blindly, light, lighting up the viewing screen as it hit the Romulan ship. How, Commander? I, I mean, how, Newton? How? It, it gets us again. The Romulan centurion shout, uh, complained. Divert power into cloaking device. We'll try to sneak p past Mutania, ordered Newton. Obakoba said, Newton, M10 is just toying with us. M10 is just toying with you. He's trying to make us lose energy. I know, but I'm trying to do as best I can by beating it logically. Mutania started firing blindly again. How again, Newton? I don't think this is working, and we are up to our necks in debris, shouted the centurion frightenedly. Newton got up off the floor, off the debris-filled floor, and noticed that the unconscious commander was almost buried. Newton ordered, put all debris into disposal tubes, and the dead bodies of the crew. The dead bodies of the crew, of our crew? Asked a puzzled centurion. Yes. And the dead body of the Praetor, Newton said as he the ship shipped from the attack. Forgive me, my dead friend. I must now use all my... But Newton was interrupted by the attack of Mutania's guns. And when the debri debris was jettisoned, the M10 computer analyzed, saying, I never saw this before. My computer memory banks. Smash cans, stabilizers, sand, lots of sand, bricks, and bodies. Well, that's not going to stop me from firing, and the Roman ship was hit again. The Roman ship wasn't damaged too badly this time, because Aunt Mutania was trying to conserve energy by shooting phaser balls now. The Roman ship shook again, and again. Tons of sand and debris poured out of the Roman crew, and the ship began to spring air leaks, with space filling the, the, the decks. The centurion grabbed Newton by the arm, frightenedly shouting, How, Newton, how? Our finest ship beaten by a stupid mutant ship. And M10 kept and M10 keeps firing even when we jettisoned our debris out and the crew's dead bodies. And it still fires. Newton looked at Mr. Nagato and said, Perhaps your computer was too stupid to know what it was. Then Newton heard the Romulan commander say, I have but one last duty to perform. Newton stopped him just as he was about to put the pull the destruct cord by kicking him hard on the side of the face and knocking him out cold in the corner of the bridge. Newton put the commander's thumb in his mouth again and patted the commander on the head and back on Mutania. 
M10 said, Oh, what the heck. I probably got them a long time ago. Manned on the Romney ship. Newton M10 has quit firing, said Obakoba. Great. Maybe Sonya and Shirley are doing something to it. But suddenly as one of the Romans suddenly as one of the Romans got up off the floor from fixing something, he accidentally put his hand on the signal button for a handhold and Mutini began firing again. Began to fire again. Darn you, Centurion, you gave us away. Phaser balls and beams shot out of Mutania and got the Roman ship. It shattered the wounded engine and tons of debris came crashing down t on the crew. Newton yelled out, Pray Tor! He meant to say weapons. And a few seconds later, the Romulan ship was tilted on its side. Electrical fires were all over the place. Newton got up off the floor and so did Obakoba. And, and said and said to Obakoba, Mr. Nagato and the three Romulans who survived the attack, there is just one more duty left I have to perform. Newton staggered over to the control panel and called Mutania and said, M10, you have won. I'm sorry we had to meet like this. I could have called you friend. M10 made a mechanical laugh. then said, I'm the victor. That's all right in my memory banks. Newton thought of something real fast to make it turn off. He said, M10, you are the ultimate computer. I am the ultimate computer. Newton then said, you are perfect. A perfect computer such as you yourself can do no wrong, right? That is true. I am perfect. I am M10, the perfect computer. Newton stopped for a few seconds, then said, M10, a computer as perfect as you can do no wrong, and if you did, what would happen? I would turn myself off. Newton smiled and said, and uh, Newton smiled and, I mean, yeah. Newton smiled and shouted, you are wrong and imperfect. You didn't or obey orders. That is one malfunction. You lied. That is two. And you kill. That is three. What is the penalty of murder? M10 made a gulping sound and said, Death. Then you must turn yourself off because death is a sin against God and man. M10 repeated, Death is a sin against God and man. I've committed murder. This unit must die. Yeah. M10 turned off and let its defenses down. Newton shouted, Sonya, surely destroy this thing. Destroy that thing. Sonya and Shirley took off their phasers and blasted a hole right in the side of the computer. Mr. Nagato shouted, No, you can't kill M10. He went crazy and started hitting Newton on, his head, on the head, knocking off his phony Romulan ears. Newton slugged M Nagato in the face so hard that by accident that it knocked him through the wall and killed him. M10 turned on again, but it was too late. Shirley destroyed its defense unit. M10 quick shouted quickly and frighteningly with a mechanical voice, no, Newton, please, stop, don't. Sonya fired again and destroyed M10's memory banks. Ooh, out, please. May Maisie Daisy, bring me a bike for two. Maisie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Maisie Daisy, bring me a bike. Newton, don't stop. Oh, oh no, help me, 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 help me. M10 started to smoke, then it burst into flame. Flames. The whole thing went up, went haywire, and started shouting, "Help me! Help me!" over and over again. Then quit. M10 was destroyed. Mutania was free, with its rooms filled with smoke. And just as Newton was about to beam aboard Mutania, the Rom.